I'm Kay and I'm a late bloomer. Today I'm on Pinewood Farm in Pinewood, Tennessee at a real sustainable cattle ranch and biodynamic farm that serves food for the Pinewood store and kitchen in Pinewood. We're going to talk to Lee McCormick, the owner, and learn a lot about mob grazing and see a lot of cows, so stay with me. When I was in Hickman County, Tennessee in September, I learned there's a new game in town, <laughs> or in the country, where one can get a fresh, organic, locally grown meal. I'd hardly swallowed my last mouth-watering bite before I found myself talking to owner and cattleman Lee McCormick. This is Pinewood, Tennessee, and this whole valley is the Piney River Valley. We basically take in almost everything you see, clear across to the hillside over there, and then all the way around, this is all Pinewood Farm. Lee's views on traditional agriculture made a major shift when it became recognized that mob grazing methods not only return fertility to depleted soil, but also sequester carbon. Mob grazing was developed in South Africa, and the, the idea or the practice is, is really you, you're recreating what the buffalo used to do. So the buffalo, there were, you know, gigantic herds of thousands and thousands millions. of buffalo, millions <laughs> of buffalo. Right. And they moved from, they moved from south to north and from north to south. Um, and they moved like a big wave across the land. So as they moved, there was a massive amount of hoof impact, um, a massive amount of energy transferred from the buffalo into the earth just through the vibration. They would eat the tops off of all the grasses and they kept moving. So they didn't live in one fenced in area and overgrazing area. They just moved, they cleaned everything, ate everything and kept going. So it gave the, it gave the land a real long rest period. Right. So you hit it real intensely. There's a big energetic exchange between the animal, the earth and the plants. And then you move on and then the plants have a, a big window to, to recover. recuperate, to recover, yeah. yeah. What you see here is all from the hoof action and from the cattle walking through here. So they've walked, if you look how high this is, that's what this looked like. So this walks, all of this, all of this green, all of this life gets walked back into the soil again and it feeds the soil. There's more life under this soil than there is above ground. And so you're fixing carbon from out of the atmosphere is going into the structure of the plant and then it's being fixed into the earth again as the plant breaks down. Oh, you could completely reverse the carbon situation through livestock management. So when you do it on the scale that we're doing it now, we literally move our cows once or twice every day. Um, How do you, well, you only go from, from here to there. It's not that big of a move. We use a lot of one strand hot fences. Yeah. So all you do is go, go unhook the fence and reel it up. And, and the, cows, the cows are so used to being moved that um, if you don't move them in time, by the time you get out there to move them that day, they'll all be standing up against the fence waiting for you. <laughs> they know, they know. <laughs> yeah, and it's, you know, the instinct of the animal is to always follow the best nutrition. Sure. Um, and they, they still have all of their natural instinct. Right. So, and especially when you start mobbing them again, the herd instinct comes back, the cattle will all stay together. I can pull all the fences up and all 400 of these cows will stay real close together. One of the basic tenets of, of holistic management is that there is no system that's gonna work. You have to learn how to live with it and everything is a variable. And everything changes and moves. It changes according to the season, to the, the amount of rainfall or not rainfall, to the, the number of animals that you have. Um, Everything's moving, but I've been doing this a long time. Right. You know, and I've lived here for a long time. 
Um, so you get it down and it gets comfortable. It's, you know. Um, the thing about mob grazing is it's literally, it has more than doubled the productivity on every piece of property that I mob graze. How uh, did you make the <coughs> jump into uh, biodynamic, uh, growing biodynamic vegetables? I got into that. My wife, um, who wrote the book My Kitchen Cure, me, Tracy McCormick, um, my wife had Crohn's disease oh. and she was really sick. And when she, we, we were living in Mexico actually, um, and she got so sick we moved back here to Tennessee. I still had the farm, but we were living in Mexico. And she started researching. Well, she found a woman that had written a book on working with autoimmune diseases. Crohn's is an autoimmune disease. Um, working with autoimmune diseases using diet and acupuncture, really holistic, um, integrative medical, medicine. yeah, holistic integrative medicine as such. Um, she started researching that, and then she found out that that woman actually lived in Franklin, ten Tennessee, an hour from us. Oh, wow. Yeah, she, she was from Chile originally and had lived up in the Northeast, but had moved to Tennessee. So me connected with her, her name's uh, Virginia Harper. Me connected with Virginia um, and just became a real advocate because immediately, when she changed her diet, she immediately felt better. I mean, it was within a week. Wow. Her symptoms changed, her life got better, and she just took off on that path of really it's self-empowerment. And she started learning about using food, working with autoimmune diseases, and out of that she started these community kitchens in Nashville where people would come in and she would have a, a big gathering, everyone would cook, she would teach them how to cook, she'd teach them about the properties of the food, and she needed a source of good fresh produce to you. So I said, well, you know, <laughs> you got we've got a couple thousand acres, I'll start a farm. <laughs> so that's what I did. That's how I got into this. And then farming like this to me is really a challenge because I'm, I'm like a cow and horse guy. I love this, but it's really challenging. You know, I know a lot of farmers. I have great respect for the organic farmers and the biodynamic farmers, you know, and your health is directly connected to what you eat and what you drink, period. End of story. There's no if, ands, or buts about that. Right. Our diet is the basis of our health. When they acquired the old Pinewood General Store in January, just across the road from the farm, they saw it as an opportunity to offer fresh, locally grown biodynamic food to the public, where she could share her healthy recipes. Me has a devoted following and is most praised for developing a sense of community in Pinewood. No one is turned away that cannot afford a meal. They've quickly turned Pinewood Store and Kitchen into a local hub where you can pick up fresh, seasonal produce from the farm, eat a healthy meal, and listen to some live music. And all them federalists say could have had him any day. like that. <laughs> if you'd like to see more stories like this on the road, please let me know. And please share Late Bloomer with a friend. I'm Kay. I'm a late bloomer. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs> Today I'm in... Pa We're going to find out how Lee McCormick the, and his wife, who own this place on a 4,000 acre ranch, cattle ranch. <laughs>